My primary gun when I first got to the unit, well, when I first got to SF, it was a Beretta. Okay. When I got to the unit, it was a 1911, a highly modified competition grade 1911. And then we transitioned to Glocks. Mm. So we started getting some Glock 26s, Glock 19s in. And once I had a Glock, I pretty much put away the 1911 because I had more rounds. The nine millimeter round, you know, a lot of guys said it was anemic, but it was performing very well and I uh, could carry a lot of ammo with limited magazines and the guns are more reliable. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. We're here talking about a little bit of EDC stuff and Mr. Lamb's, the <laughs> oh geez. Mr. Lamb has a... <laughs> okay, you start over if you want. No, no, we're gonna keep rolling oh, with it. Oh, I was, come on, man. You ha Really? No, whatever, go ahead. Right. I'm sorry, I apologize. I, You're I, good. I, I'll, wait, we're let me put my face on. We're here. Okay. You have a very specific and unique position in the industry. Not only have you carried guns professionally as a Green Beret, you've kind of, you have that resume of, been there, done that, but what makes you special in my mind is that you've continued your training, your research into everyday carry. You've obviously had to shift some of what it is that you carry every single day. So what gun, what pistol were you carrying for the most part when you were in and deploying as a Green Beret? Okay, so that's a, a loaded question because we carried a lot of different guns, but primarily, my primary gun when I first got to the unit, well, when I first got to SF, it was a Beretta. Okay. When I got to the unit, it was a 1911, a highly modified competition grade 1911. And then we transitioned to Glocks. Mm. So we started getting some Glock 26s, Glock 19s in. And once I had a Glock, I pretty much put away the 1911 because I had more rounds. The nine millimeter round, you know, a lot of guys said it was anemic, but it was performing very well. And uh, I could carry a lot of ammo with limited magazines and the guns are more reliable. And the 1911 to me is still the most shootable gun on the planet. But it's heavy, it's not quite as reliable. I'd say these days they are way more reliable than they were. So that's a good representation of guns at a, a time period are fantastic. And then as technology develops, you start to find that, hey, this gun is a little bit easier to shoot. It's more lightweight, I can carry more ammo. The way the technology works with even the ammunition, we start to find that nine millimeter, yeah, it's a smaller round. It's moving a little bit faster, but what is it actually doing ballistically when it is hitting whatever it is that you're shooting at? So the point is technology is developing. So not only have you been in the military and trained people professionally, you got out and you continue to train people with Viking tactics as a civilian, you've been training military law enforcement and civilians, but you also have done two things that are special, I think. One is you've adapted with the technology and used the tools that are coming out on a daily basis these days to actually carry and develop your abilities. And then that second point is staying proficient yourself. Because there's a lot of people that will spend 10, 20 years in, and then when they get out, they feel like, man, I did my time, I'm really good, or I was good back in the day, but they don't keep their abilities up. So, on the technology side. Yeah, I, right away I would say technology's not as important as shooting. Okay. So, I see guys on the range all the time, they show up with a really expensive customized lock from Whoever. Yeah, whoever, Zebra or whatever company is out there. And the gun doesn't work. And then you got a guy with a 1911 that shows up and, and it's an old rack grade 1911 and it runs flawlessly. Well, yeah, I'm going to pick the 1911 in that case. So I think that, I'm not saying I'm going to go back to a rack grade 1911. The point is you got to train and technology, if it's a crutch, then I disagree with it. If it gives you an advantage, that's a different point. A crutch and an advantage are two different things, you sure, know? Sure, sure. So, and as I've gotten older, the technology, red dots, they help guys when their sight starts to fade a little bit. With the red dot, I don't have to worry about seeing the sights like I used to. I can just see that dot and, and go on with it, so. Hey, for those of you that are looking for some of the gear that we're using in this video, as well as getting out to the range and training, very important please go ahead and check out Shooting Surplus. We have a link in the description of this video where you can sign up for a newsletter, save on some ammo, they notify you about some sales. We also have a discount code, Dirty Civilian. If you do use uh, that code, you can save some money when you check out. Thanks for guys for watching, and also thank you to Shooting Surplus for keeping content like this going. Make sure you hit the range. Sorry I interrupted, but... No, no, you're <laughs> fine. So that kind of leads to my next question. 
being that you have spent a lot of time with a lot of different firearms and you've had the exposure to a lot of different firearms, what is it that you're carrying today? Well, my carry gun is a uh, P365 XL and probably even more important than that is what ammo I'm carrying. I'm carrying the Hornady Critical Duty. That's a 135 grain bullet that uh, performs extremely well. There's a lot of great bullets out there, so I'm not saying this is the bullet you have to carry, but this is a, a very good bullet out of the nine millimeter. So the reason I like the, the 365, and you can see I've got several 365s here. I like the 365 because for a small package, I can have a very reliable weapon system and it's pretty shootable for the size that it is. The other thing that I, I want to try to do is have a light on my pistol. And I've struggled with that because first of all, it's hard to find a, a holster that will hold a lighted pistol. So I've got an a and r holster right here. Yeah. I've got the holster that works. So I was able to put the nightstick light on there. And this nightstick light is made to go on a 365. Streamlight makes one, Surefire makes one. What I don't like about the Surefire, and I hate to say this because I love Surefire, but they're XCS or whatever it's called, XSC, it, it's a rechargeable light. Right. I don't like rechargeable anything because if I need a battery, I can just pull this battery out and I, I'm, I can replace yeah. it quickly. So that's, I'm embarrassed to have, you not have a Surefire in my gun, but this nightstick is a really nice light. The stream lights, I've got some of them here as well. One of the reasons I'm not carrying some of these lights in these guns is I just don't have holsters. So that's something to talk about. And then on the back end of the gun, this is kind of rigged up right now, Outer Impact. I have no affiliation to them, but I bought a riser plate simply so I could put a Delta Point Pro on there. So why would I want a Delta Point Pro versus some of these other sites? You looked at it, you like the Delta Point Pro. It's got a big window, it's right. a very durable site. There's no buttons on the side that you're accidentally gonna push. Top loading battery. You top loading battery, it's, it's a bomber sight, it's amazing. Well, it doesn't fit on this pistol. So I made it fit with outer limits, outer limits, outer impact. There you go. Outer impact uh, spacer there. So oh. that's one of the things about innovation. I, why didn't I do that two years ago? Because I'm like, oh, well, it can't be done. Well, then it drove me so crazy because some of these sites, when you pick up this site in particular here and you bring it up on target, it magnifies the target. Yeah, it's got like a, a 0.1 magnification, messes with your eyes. Even those, there's there can be like a blue tint on some of those RMRs that I've learned so, to overcome, but it still drives me crazy at times. So why is there a blue tint? Do you know why that is? Well, I know that the re to my knowledge, the reasoning is they do it intentionally so that it is, uh, think sunglasses. It's reducing the amount of light that's actually passing to your eye and it allows you to reduce the brightness setting on your dot, thus giving you a longer battery life. That's the reason that I was told. Is that what you believe yeah, too? Yeah, they don't have to drive as much power to their to project, project their dot. So that's awesome, but it looks ridiculous. And it's intentional. Hey guys, the rest of the team here at DC, they love to make fun of me because I'm terrible about eating. I forget all about it. I get so busy in the work, so busy in the edit, so busy tinkering with gear and new things. I inevitably forget to eat. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I have to just stuff my face and it's not always the greatest food. And that is why things like factor meals are actually pretty convenient. My wife and I have used them off and on over the course of the past few years when we need them, when life is just so crazy, we don't have time to meal prep for ourselves and all of our kids. So if you're looking for a way to eat better and eat more healthy and eat in a way in which, uh, you know, is a little bit more intentional, uh, factor is a great option. So right now you can save 50% on all meals by visiting factormeals.com slash DC50. Uh, you know, we have all this gear and all this kit, but unfortunately uh, you can't eat it. Ultimately, you actually have to sustain yourself. So uh, for me, definitely makes things a lot easier and maybe I can get a little bit bulkier and these guys can stop making fun of me by loading up on some protein meals from Factor. Again, you can save 50% off all your meals at factormeals.com slash DC50. Hit it up. Fill up your bellies, not too much, but just enough, and then get back to work. We talked about this a little bit before we started, but some of the older shooters that you mentioned, well, I'll let you ask that question because I don't want to steal your thunder well, there. But. So, so something that I was pointing out was that I have, I'm around a lot of people who, take my dad for example, he can pick up a gun and shoot it really, really well, but whenever you give him a dot on a pistol, and it took time to convince man, you got to try shooting with a dot on your pistol. As soon as that came about, 
man, he is competing with me on accuracy like crazy. He's transitioning targets really fast simply because there's a little touch of technology that is allowing his, granted, older eyes to function the way that they're designed and stare at the target as opposed to down on their iron sights. Yeah, so I, I like that fact other than now you've got to maintain a red dot on your gun. Right. So if you're the guy or the gal that doesn't spend a lot of time on the range, you may not want to put a red dot on your pistol because it requires maintenance. You got to get up and look at that site, site. Oh, it's dead. You better have a battery there. And I've got several different sites here. Guess what? Every one takes a different battery. Sure, sure. So I keep a lot of batteries for the Delta Point Pro because I have them on several of my guns. The gun that I carry if I'm going in the woods or if I'm hunting would be that gun there. Or if I'm training people, this is my carry gun. Now I've got a Delta Point Pro on it. So I'm, I'm, squared away there made in america by the way as well yeah. some of these others are different batteries they're cool little sites but i still trust the delta point pro more and honestly the reason i shoot a lot of these other sites because i want to see what's out there and what people are doing right. one thing i do like about this particular site and this is a, a hollow sun eps i think it's called eps carry it's enclosed so if it's raining you're not going to have an issue some of these other sites obviously are going to right they're so, going to cause a little so trouble two things one that i've noticed is now the gun that you're carrying has the same visual size, window, dot, brightness setting abilities as maybe the gun that you're shooting when you're training people. And yeah. visually, you're working with the same piece as opposed to going to something that you're carrying that looks different than something that you shoot a whole ton when you're training people. Do you think that there are some of those benefits when you're spending a yeah. ton of time with that gun that when you pull this thing for your EDC reps or in a very worst case scenario, it looks and feels the same visually. Yeah, and the other thing I like about the Delta Point Pro is the the, the buttons. I know how the, how the button works, right. which is very simple, as opposed to you've, you've got to read the manual, at least I do, to operate some of these other sites. That's fine, but I don't, I don't shoot this site as much as I do the Delta Point Pro. A follow-up question, though. So this is the gun that you carry. Does this have bone stock components uh, inside or, or as close to uh, the way that SIG actually ships that product? Okay, this gun, the only parts that I've changed are I put a flashlight on it and I put this plate and I put the sight. Okay. There is no trigger job or anything done to this pistol. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that because this gun here has an M Carbo trigger and striker springs and sear springs and stuff that I put in it. That's an experiment. Right. One thing I try not to do is experiment with my EDC gun mm -hmm. because it's your EDC gun. It's right. got to go bang. So far, the M Carbo stuff has worked and I, I don't... I don't I don't know the guys at M Carbo, but it, the parts seem to be nice parts. Right, but and, you want to validate that that tool right. is working as designed before you're carrying it every single day. Uh, this is a Spectre comp on this pistol. This is a 365 X Macro. It works, it definitely makes a difference, sure. but that makes more of a difference. Okay. So what I would say, either one, you know, go whichever direction you want. If you want a gun that's 100% reliable out of the box, then I would get this gun right here. Sure. This has a M Carbo, no, this one has an M Carbo trigger as well. You can see it's a little bit, right. little bit different. This is their Tac Ops gun. As a, a bone stock gun, this is an awesome gun. It, it feels really good in the hand too. So the next thing that I'm curious it's about It's a 17 round mag too. That's a ton of ammo, yeah. yeah. With all that, let's go hit the range, and I'm curious what it is that you're doing these days and what your mindset is behind staying proficient with the gun that you're carrying. I'm always up for the range. Okay, let's do it. All right. Don't forget, you guys, ammo fuels all of your training, for the most part. You can dry fire, but you still have to hit the range from time to time. We have to thank our sponsor of this channel and this episode, Wideners. Thank you, Wideners, for providing the ammo so we can actually come out here and shoot with Kyle Lamb. It's been an awesome day. If you guys are looking to save some money on, uh, on Widener's ammunition, you can check the link in our description here and uh, make sure you get some blamo. Training matters. All right, well, as stressed, the training component is the biggest deal. It doesn't really matter what gun it is that you're carrying if you can't hit anything with it. So whether you're dry firing or shooting a couple times a month or even once a month, make sure you're hitting the range. Now, the other component to that is if you go shoot, you can go burn it down and go shoot pop cans from three yards away, but you may not be getting any better. And you may actually be establishing some, some bad habits that Although you're gonna have to fun. break. It is fun. That's for sure. You do need to have fun on the range.
All right, good. I can see one miss from here. So 7.46. All right. Wow, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. I'm, I'm hoping there's 10 rounds in that thing. <laughs> All right, 20.97. 9 9.73. I used all my time. Yeah, that was very well done. Very well done. Okay, going hot. Nine point nine six. Okay, we had four rounds over. We are videoing this so we know that that is actually what happened. So right out of the gate, you got a minus four because you had four rounds over time. Okay. Okay. Oh, slow draw make up for it here. Come on, Dot. I think you beat me on that. I had a hard time finding my Dot there. I had to think for a minute there. <laughs> Those were all in. 776. All right. Seven point Seven six. Whoo! Five point six zero. One mic, I nope, believe. Nope, nope. You hit them all. Okay. You hit every one of them. Five point six zero. Very, very good run. All right. Well, that was pretty good, man. Get out there and train with your concealed carry. Is all I can say. Fantastic. Well, in the meantime, I want to shoot some of these three sixty fives, maybe even a three twenty or two that you got. But again, at the end of the day, like Kyle said, whatever gun you're willing to carry, make sure you're carrying with it and make sure that you're getting reps with it. Kyle, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Yeah, let's go shoot those other guns. Sounds good. Seventeen rounds. I know this thing's been out for a little while, but this thing's awesome. <laughs>